Hello all. I discussed uh, uh, in the previous video the dielectric properties. What is dielectric? What is refractive index? The physical meaning of refractive index. Then I introduced the concept of ref, uh, absorption, dispersion, and all. Now today uh, I will discuss about the waves in metals. And in metals also there is refractive index. So what? Where from where the refractive index come and uh, what is the meaning of the refractive index in metal I mean uh, which kind of properties it will show basically uh, I will discuss about waves in metals and its low frequency high frequency approximation then I will discuss about the properties like the skin depth plasma frequency so let us start so I in earlier videos I have broadly discussed about the damped vibration of electrons while it is uh, in serial why it is applied uh, it is being applied uh, a while a in an EMF is ap applied okay so now that was earlier the dielectric was consists of bound electrons dielectric consists of bound electrons now the basic difference between the metals and dielectrics is in dielectrics you get bound electrons in metals you get bound electrons as well as free electrons but the contribution due to the free electrons will be much 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 more than the bound electrons so basically the for the bound electron contribution the equations for the dielectrics will be the same as the equations uh, in metal case where the bound electrons will be considered but whenever I consider free electrons then the damped oscillation motion that is whenever an incident electric field which is varying with frequency that is AC frequency or light or radiation EM radiation is applied on metal I have to consider the collective oscillation of the free electrons basically the electrons are free they can move through entire the metals so I have to consider the collective oscillations of the free electrons. So my equation of motion which is the damped, damped oscillation case earlier was m into x double dot plus with the damping factor gamma x dot the damping is proportional to the velocity plus it was with the natural frequency omega naught square x equals to my applied force. Okay. And here if the uh, uh, like force can be E0 into cos omega t uh, in terms of electric field. Okay. Now in bound case we can say that this omega square is the natural frequency of the bound electrons. Now why is it so? Because I have also discussed it but uh, today I uh, again mention that whenever a bound electron is oscillating under an incident radiation then it will oscillate it will oscillate uh, it has some displacement but it will try to get its position back but due to its inertia it will get along uh, like it will do a simple harmonic motion with a natural frequency of omega naught okay because it is bound so it will try to get back in its position so in uh, for the bound electron case omega naught square is was considered but here the electrons are free so their collective oscillation of the electrons I don't need to consider this omega naught square term there is no such kind of uh, oscillation that which is uh, to gain its position back so set this equals to zero for the metal case my uh, uh, the oscillation equation is the m x double dot plus gamma x dot equals to the applied force okay so from here from this equation you calculate the displacement of electron x and then you calculate the dipole moments that is p that is electronic charge into x and then you calculate polarizability alpha and you get the value of refractive index, I mean n square, because while n is the refractive index, you get n square equals to 1 plus n into q e square by m epsilon naught into 1 by minus omega square plus i gamma omega. So here, 
again you get refractive index has real part as well as imaginary part. Now, where do, does the imaginary part comes from? The imaginary part comes from the damping, damp, due to the damping in the oscillation, oscillatory motion. Okay. So, you know that whenever an uh, electric field is applied to a metal, the electrons are moving with an average velocity and that velocity is called drift velocity, V-drift. And whenever there is a, I mean, uh, how does the, I mean, our main concern, how to find out this gamma, that is, how I calculate gamma. For that, gamma is related to the conductivity, that means sigma of the metal. Now, you know that metal, whenever there is a charge, charge is uh, electrons, current, they are oscillating, they are going with average velocity, V drift equals to QE by M into tau. For tau is the relaxation time, the time between the two collisions, between the collision between two electrons. Okay? So, and also from drift theory, we know that sigma equals to N into Q is called by M into tau. So, basically, I can write tau as uh, 1 by gamma or gamma equals to 1 by tau. Whenever my uh, force, that is I am applying, and the damping force, uh, which uh, uh, I am considering here, if both are equal, they, if there is no average acceleration, then the applied force will be equal to the damping force. Then I can write the term, the damping force term gamma into m into v dipped equals to the applied force term, that is q into e, equals to, from here I can write, that Q into E equals to M into V drift by tau. So you consider gamma M into V drift equals to M V drift by tau. Here you get gamma equals to 1 by tau. The damping factor equals to 1 by relaxation time. The time between the collision of two electrons. Okay. So from sigma you can calculate tau or gamma. Now, if you write this equation in terms of tau, you will get n square equals to 1 plus sigma by epsilon naught, 1 by r omega into 1 plus i omega tau. So this is the general relation of refractive index for metallics. Now, I will consider two cases. One, when my frequency, the applied frequency of the applied electric field is low and one was the first case was the low frequency where the applied electric field is varying with the low frequency and another is the high frequency case so low frequency means the omega tau is much much lower than one so here i can write n square equals to minus iota into sigma by epsilon naught omega so now, A equals to root over of sigma by epsilon naught omega into root of i minus i. So, you can write root of i, iota equals to 1 minus iota by root 2. So, you simplify, you just write it in terms of sigma by 2 epsilon naught omega into 1 minus iota. Where 1 is a real part and iota also has a magnitude 1. So, real part and imaginary part, both have equal magnitude. What does it mean? This means that the real part is also high, and imaginary part is also high. This is a high imaginary part of the refractive index. Earlier I told you that high imaginary part of the refractive index tells you the absorption or dissipation. So, this is a high refractive index, imaginary part of the refractive index gives you that the damping of the waves will be much more rapid. That is the exponential decay will be much more rapid. And how, what will be its amplitude? The electric field, the equation of the electric field solution will be e naught into the power of minus omega ni z by c into the power i omega t minus nr c nr by c into z. Where ni is the real part, ni, ni is the imaginary part and nr is the real part. Okay, so in I, here the imaginary part, I have to put this imaginary term, root sigma.
Sigma by 2 epsilon naught omega. So I put this and I get the value exponentially, exponential of this term. This I can write as exponential minus z by delta. For delta, I put 2 epsilon naught c square by sigma into omega root of. So this delta is known as skin depth because it shows you that the amplitude it shows you the amplitude how much the amplitude of the electric field will from 1 becomes 1 by e that is it will decay up to 1 by e times so i if i plot this exponentially decaying wave i get this amplitude variation of exponentially decaying variation and i plot it here that the that means that the waves will inside the conductor it will decay rapidly and how much it can go it can go up to its skin depth now what will be the case when i apply when the incident frequency is of high so the whenever i consider high frequency then i neglect the gamma term my damping term i will neglect it i will lift out with this term only. So I write it here as n square equals to 1 minus n qb square by n epsilon naught into omega square. Look, here is no imaginary term. So high frequency case, the refractive index of the metal will be real and negative. Now, real is alright. Real means there is no attenuation. What do you mean by negative? Negative means the oscillation of the electrons. Okay, look, you are you have an incident radiation and electrons are basically dipoles are also radiating. So the oscill there will be a phase shift between the incident EMF and the oscillation of that collective oscillation of that electrons. The wave there will be also another wave for the collective oscillation of the electrons and that wave frequency phase will be out of phase to that incident one, which have been applied. So basically the negative means that is out of phase oscillation of the electrons. Okay. So now you get real negative high, uh, values for metals. If I can here also define this quantity n qv square by m epsilon naught as omega, omega p square. Where omega p square is the plasma frequency. It is the frequency property it is it will act like a critical frequency how is it well it is depending on the number of uh, electrons i mean charge density and qv a epsilon are basically constant so it will depend on the charge density of the material now n square will be in terms of plasma frequency n square equals to 1 minus omega p square by omega square so when omega is less than omega p then my refractive index will be imaginary the refractive index of the material will be imaginary means there will be attenuated wave. And whenever omega is greater than omega p, the refractive index will be real. And real means it will propagate, the light, incident light can propagate. So whenever incident light, EM radiation can propagate through a material, the metal or the metal will act as a transparent metal for that frequency. So let us hear uh, mention that the skin depth uh, of copper which I have forgot to mention that the tau the relaxation time of copper is of the order of 10 to the power minus 12 second and the skin depth of the copper is 6.7 into 10 to the power minus 5 centimeter look here 10 to the power minus 5 centimeter this much distance is its skin depth that this much distance the incident wave incident radiation can uh, propagate through the metal. This is so, so, so uh, small. Okay. So, if from there, the plasma frequency as a critical frequency, we have a real life application. Like, if we want to have radio wave, uh, radio wave propagation, uh, we have uh, ionosphere in our environment. So, with this uh, ionosphere, we use this for radio communication because if our signal is less than omega p the plasma frequency of this 
electrons here that is in ionosphere okay so if the radio frequency is less than omega p the wave can reflect the wave will reflect but if omega that is radio wave frequency is greater than omega p the wave can propagate so for communication we use the radio waves of omega where this omega is less than the plasma frequency so it is the real life application of this high frequency or plasma plasma so here plasma frequency will act as a critical frequency below which the waves uh, will reflect and after which the wave can propagate through the medium so hey friends this is done for today so now i think you have a brief idea of the refractive index how does it come from what is the real uh, what does this real power tell and what does its uh, imaginary part tells you and so hopefully happy learning so thank you